Um, all right. Um, hi, everyone. So my name is David. Uh, I run this social empowerment program called I'm Talented. Uh, I think you should know that um, this is what I do for fun because I really enjoy doing this. So my full-time job is I, I teach, uh, so I'm a teacher. So now, um, b before I start anything, I just want to give credit when credit is due. Um, I'm Talented has been running for quite a few years now, but it wouldn't be a uh, success if not for all these people. Um, they are the one that is running the show. I came up with the idea, but all of them had different talents, so we brought everyone together. And so one person is good at coding, one person is good at this, one person is good at that. And once you bring a group of talented people together, then you create a super uber good talented program. Now, allow me to explain what exactly is I'm Talented. Um, it is a social empowerment program that seeks to um, create opportunities for youth to discover their talents. Um, what I really mean is this. Um, so basically, I'm Talented, what we do is we ask schools, schools, can you send us your worst kids? Don't send us your best. Um, most of these kids, they don't do well academically. Um, and if they don't do well academically, there's a correlation to a financial background as well. They, they don't come from quite well-to-do families. So when they come for this program, what we do, um, so a lot of them won't do well academically. So my, my, our take is this, just because you don't do well for math and science, that doesn't mean you're stupid. It simply means that you have talents in other areas. It's just that it's undiscovered. So what we really want to do is to help you to uncover your talents. So you see the different workshops we have here, um, like just now this um, was robotics. So we, we introduced them to robotics, journalism, um, Nikon coming down to teach them photography at the age of 14 to about 16 years old. Now what we really, really, really want to do is this, um, to tell you that, hey, you are talented. Now, you, 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 you might not be good at this, but you are better at something else. You must develop your talent. I'll come back to that in a while. When do we do this? We only do this in March um, for strategic reasons. Because once we get them motivated, they realize that, hey, I'm good at coding. Then we'll say, hey, IT has this course, Poly has this course. To get to this course, you need these grades. So if you see what I'm trying to do, I'm, reverse, I'm trying to reverse engineer motivation here. So when we, we only can do it in March because that's term one holidays. So once they get motivated, they f generally find a reason to pursue something, then they start running. Um, so if you do it any time later, you hit them on a high, but they have no time to, um, to jump out on their own. By the way, all this is just a social empowerment program. It's not government funded. I'm just doing this uh, because we really like it. Now, um, 14 to 17 years old, I think I've mentioned this. Um, so that's the third fact. So how do we do this? Um, well, five very simple steps. The first, we will send out to all schools. Schools will um, sign up the kids. We say, send me your worst, don't send me your best. So they will choose five workshops. So we have a range of like 10 to 15 workshops. Um, they choose five things that, five tasters that they don't mind trying. It could be songwriting, journalism, fashion design, um, website building, things that you don't really learn in school. Um, so of this five, now this is where the challenging part comes in. Then my team on our end, we will sort out, we will assign them three out of five. So there's no ranking. Um, you get to go to three um, taster workshop. So on that day when you come, you go for three one-hour taster workshop. So for example, I don't know what's journalism. So I go into the workshop and I realize, hmm, journalism is not my thing. Then I try the second one. Uh, maybe now I build an app. Okay, an app is my thing. So then of this three, I would then choose two. So when I cho of this three, I choose two. Of this two, we will reallocate you again to get one choice. So you do second part, which is called deep dive. After you do deep dive for about two or three other three-hour session, now, the next important thing that we believe is about creating something because these kids never tasted success in their life. So what we want them to do is to build something. So at the end of nine hours, so they either create... Um, I always remember this story that one of them hated Justin Bieber so much that he showed everyone how he, um, from the YouTube, from don't know how many likes, became zero. So imagine, he's only like 15 years old and he's doing this kind of thing. They designed their own app. Um, they, they just built things. So I, I think that, that in itself brought me a lot of smile because like these kids were like, hey, I, I can finally do something. Um, but really, it's trying to reverse engineer a few things. Then number four, which is showcase. Why is it important to showcase? Because of self-esteem. Because most of these kids, they are just your, your naughty kids in school. They don't get... The only time they go on the stage is for punishment. Um, but this time around, we bring everyone on stage. You're like, show us what you learned. Um, lastly, this is the most important thing. Um, where the instructors will say, now, where do you go next to develop this? If you want to do fashion design, the Masek Poly has this course. If you want to do this, go to ITE. ITE has this course. So really, in this, I'm talented. I'm just, we, all we are trying to do is to give them a reason. Now, help. So we have a problem. Now, what is our problem then? Um, currently, what we have is this. We have been doing pretty much like your, the last um, presentation you heard. 
we also use Excel. Um, but you see, I have very talented people in my team. Uh, I can't really do this. So what they did was they created this logic um, that would work so well that whatever that um, when they key in five preference, we'll be able to allocate them. But the problem is we have to cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste to sort out into different class lists. And there's also restrictions, like for example, each class must not be more than 15 people. So if we exceed, then we have to reconfigure everything. That is round one, which is five workshops, you choose three. So after the three, you indicate two of the things that you don't mind doing deep dive. Now, this two deep dive, it's also with the logic, but the next problem comes back again. Um, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, so we thought we could exp uh, expedite this um, because now we have a small grand vision we want to spread it across all over Singapore. So we started with Central CDC. Now um, Southeast heard about this. They said, hey, we want to do this also for our kids. So if we want to automate this whole thing such that the whole Singapore will benefit from it, then this becomes very important. Now, uh, I will pass the time to my boss. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good evening everyone. So before I start off, right, I just want to thank Elisha for doing a damn good job. I first saw Tech Ladies like one year ago. I sponsored as part of PayPal, I now I'm a mentor and I've seen it grow from January, the start. This January, it's not that long ago. Oh, this January. Yeah, one year ago, same. And yeah, I just wanted to thank her for what she has done for the community and I hope all of you can give her a round of applause Woo! for all that she has done. So yeah, you have heard what he said about the problem that we have, except he described it a bit too easy. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, our guys actually spend a lot of time to compile all the spreadsheets together. It's a lot of manual labor. So I'll call this app the sorting hat because you know like Harry Potter, right? You mm -hmm. put the sorting hat and then we sort you into classes. So first, the mentor, who am I? Uh, I started programming when I was 10 years old. I was on, I remember the old days when it was Yahoo and not Google. And then my dad had a microchip and a bunch of LEDs. I was trying to figure out how the LED light up. So I went on to Yahoo and figured out how to code the microchip and I somehow managed to learn assembly without knowing it was the hardest language. Because I was a kid back then, I had no idea what was hard. So I just kept trying and it was more interesting than the maths homework beside me. So yeah, you know, maths and not doing maths, yeah. And then along the way, I started doing more coding. I picked up a lot of random stuff. Like I keep on picking up new technology by myself. And I ended up in NUS. I taught in NUS for two years while I was studying there. So I was teaching the introductory programming module. And then I came out to work. I joined PayPal for two years. And then now I'm the head of infrastructure at Nugget, where we transform big data to PowerPoint slides and then we sell them to corporates. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good summary. So, this project, right, is quite, is, I would say it's not that difficult, but there's a certain difficulty to it, so it's only for if you like pain, right? If you want something easy, yeah. So we don't really have much input, so uh, I'll just run through the whole thing I'll tell, and I'll tell you where the difficult parts are later. So first, well, what we need is we need a page where people can add, actually add new schools. And then when you click on the add new school button, you have a page to upload a CSV, right? It sounds really easy. And then you can replace schools and stuff. Right, and then when you come back to this page, when you click generate class list, you know, you'll magically generate this list of everyone allocated to their individual classes. So instead of having like three people trying to compile their Excel spreadsheets together within 10 minutes, you just press a button now. So that's what we're trying to do. Now the hard part here is to figure out how to generate this class list. And to be honest, I haven't figured out myself yet. I mean, I have an idea of how I want to do it, but I haven't actually done it yet, so I have no idea how I'm going to do it. But we will figure it out together. <laughs> The next part is also pretty much the same, you know, you take in all the class list. So it's basically two problems that's almost identical, right? It's just different parts and different numbers. So yeah, it's basically just the first part explains pretty much everything, except this part compiles it from the two choices to the one choice. Yeah, so this is pretty much the same thing. So in this project, uh, we'll be covering topics like, you know, how do you repeat stuff that you wrote for the previous part so you don't keep repeating the code over and over again, stuff like that. And yeah, a few best practices that the gurus frown on the beginners when they look at their code is like, sometimes the gurus will be like, why are you repeating this everywhere? Why are you copying and pasting the code? So these are the some of the stuff that we will go into as we do this course. Now, I understand that this might be a bit hard because it's a CS problem and 
I haven't figured out the solution myself in my head, but at I'm Talented, we believe everyone is talented. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I just want to share a story with you guys, right? So in our f the first time I was helping run it and we had a programming class, the teacher came in and told us that there was no way her students could learn Ruby on Rails in two Saturdays. Right? She was like, he can't learn it, and then we did all the database stuff and everything. And we did it, right? This kid built a website with databases and everything. And he uploaded his own photos. He created this website that showed, I think, his favorite hobbies and stuff. With, it was database back. He could upload new photos with a new hobby and stuff like that. So if a bunch of 14-year-old kids can do it in two Saturdays, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the tools that we'll be using, uh, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I'll be completely honest. I haven't touched Ruby on Rails before. Well, I've learned a lot of stuff. So the benefits of joining this program is you get to see how a programmer learn on the fly, <laughs> right? You will learn how to learn new stuff, and I think that's a very useful skill to have because you'll see the whole thought process, the whole mental model behind how I pick up a new skill, and that will help you because languages come and go, right? One day Ruby on Rails is the cool thing, the next day Node.js is the cool thing, and then two, two years later another new language is a new thing. It's a new cool thing, right? You're not going to take a boot camp every single time there's a new language, right? So you need to learn how to learn, and that's where me not knowing how to do Ruby and Rails comes in. <laughs> and then we'll, have, we'll be backed by Postgres, which is the, basically a standard stack. Trello is the, thing, is the board that we use to manage our tasks. I'll break, it, I'll break down our programming tasks into smaller subsets that you can actually do in one, two hour chunks. And then GitHub, which is to store our code and to manage the entire code base. Slack for communications, and Heroku, as Ted has mentioned earlier, to host the website. And yeah, that's it from me. Thank you.